Hello, Roy, Jake, and all the partners at sea. Greetings from historic Springfield, Illinois, USA. There's our beautiful state capital behind me there. I wanted to share with you some data that I've been following. It's been out for a few years now, but I started hearing the names of Lesbonette and Peter Field mentioned more and more. Mark Ritson gave him about five minutes in a, in a presentation, and I noticed that Byron Sharp's book uh, sources them several times. I started hearing their names show up in, in different marketing interviews on podcasts, uh, article after article after article. And I thought, all right, I gotta look into what this is all about. And what it's all about is this conundrum that a lot of marketers have been having for many years about how do you balance short-term marketing with long-term marketing. In other words, where does it make sense to look at long-term branding? Where does it make sense to look at short-term sales activation? And it turns out there appears to be a ratio that is at play here. So who are these guys, Lesbonette and Peter Field? They, uh, among other things, run something called the Effectiveness Awards in the UK. And for the past 30 years, they have been looking at over 1,000 different campaigns, measuring them on 83 different points, um, and collecting all this data. The result is a book called The Long and the Short of It, and uh, there's a lot of great stuff in there that I'd like to share with you. I uh, can't get to all of it, but there's some key points here uh, that I think is useful for all of us. Uh, basically, their first argument is you're not going to have long-term success unless you address the short-term needs. But, and there's a big caveat there, don't think that you can stack a bunch of short-term success on top of each other and get a long-term effect, a long-term brand built by just stacking short-term things on top of each other. You get, in order to do long-term, you do have to address the short, but addressing the short only does not mean that you're going to get long-term success. Because, as you can see, when you focus on the short term, uh, yes, you get these nice spikes, but the decay is very quickly. And then you get another spike, and it drops off. You get another spike, and it drops off. Pretty sure a young marketer named Roy Williams warned us about this 20 years ago. And you get into a sales chart that looks like having a sale, not having a sale. Having a sale, not having a sale. Pretty soon the peaks are less high, and the valleys are a little deeper. And then the peaks are less high, and the valleys are still yet deeper. But over time, brand building is the way to go if you want to have long-term success. Uh, it turns out that right around six months or so is where this thing starts to tip. Uh, if you are measuring things in the short term, oh yeah, obviously, it makes sense to go with short-term activation. But if you plan to live another day and be in business five years from now, the short term isn't going to get you anywhere. You have to start, you have to look at the long term as well. Again, that sounds like something we've heard before, the chickening out period. The chickening out period usually falls between week eight and week 14. As a matter of fact, in a room full of advertisers, I always see heads bobbing up and down. I had this really great idea one time, and it was exactly three months into it that we pulled the ripcord. Why? And you can see from this chart that for a one to two year hit, yes, short term does make sense and short term does win. But man, look at the hangover that happens in year three and beyond uh, where the short term just is not helping you grow, but the long term does start to kick in there. What do we mean by sales activation? Okay, we're talking about things that have to do with uh, price promotions, uh, couponing, obviously, uh, but it doesn't have to just be that. It could be, it could be uh, contests, it could be bundles, it could be anything that converts people who are in that bottom of the marketing funnel, converts them right now. That's what we mean by short-term activation. There's a lot of different ways to approach it. The most common way would be to have a sale. Brand building has to do with emotional priming. Tell them why and wait for the win. It needs to have strong salience. In other words, it needs to have something that sticks with people after the ad. So what is this ratio? According to Bennett and Field, the ratio is 60-40. 60% of your advertising budget and efforts goes to long-term brand building. 40% goes to sales activation. That 60-40 is an average, it's not a rule, okay? And that's important to know because not every uh, category is going to act the same way. If you're a grocery store, obviously activation, sales activation is going to be a little more uh, dominant there. Uh, tomatoes are 49 cents, come get them. Uh, but if you're financial services or a dentist or a roofer or something like that, uh, those customers and those categories are not as easily moved with sales uh, uh, sales priming. 
you still, but you still have to address it. The point is the tipping point appears to be right at that 40% mark, give or take, where uh, doing sales activation stops working less and less and less uh, and starts to erode the brand. Why? Well, because sales activation um, causes uh, a lot of price sensitivity. You know, if you're always, if you're Kohl's or you're JCPenney and something's always on sale, then there's that expectation of uh, there always being a sale. Uh, it cuts into the profits. That's really the big thing is that it just chews up the profits and it's hard to pull out of that hole. Uh, it speaks to a more rational, logical mind, and um, and the results erode rapidly. You get a nice hit, and then it drops off. Brand building, on the other hand, um, what we find, of course, is that strong brands have less price sensitivity. The effects are not immediate. They build over time. It's more of an emotional persuasion, and you're talking to a larger pool of people. You are deliberately talking to everyone and, uh, and inviting them into the funnel. The funnel literally looks like this. When you focus on the long term, the results happen later, but they're broader effects and the paybacks are bigger. When you focus on the short term, yes, the results happen sooner, uh, but, the, but the overall effect is narrower and you get smaller payback. Now, depending on what you're trying to do, it's worthwhile looking at different media because different media are going to work in different ways. For sales activation, you're looking at a more targeted media uh, where, where you're giving them a path to a purchase. For brand building, it's an emotional approach. It's a more broad reach. Ultimately, though, in the long run, they recommend you think broad. And you can see that when you target new customers, you get some result. When you target uh, existing customers, you get some result. But when you target the whole market, that's where things really start to get juicy and start to get good. Targeting everybody and bringing them in uh, in the long run works better. Obviously, a different creative approach for each rational messages are more for your short-term response. Emotional uh, priming doesn't work as well in the short term. But profit driving, if you want to win in the long term, again, it's that emotional branding approach. And this is what the data shows. And we know this to be true. I can go and buy a tube of Pepsodent for a dollar, a dollar. And what am I getting in, in that Pepsodent? I'm getting 0.24% of sodium fluoride, the stuff that makes toothpaste work. I can also buy a tube of Crest for $5, $5. And what am I getting? I'm getting 0.243% of sodium fluoride. Uh, the stuff in those tubes is exactly the same but there's a $4 difference in the profits. Are, why? Why? Because, because Crest, for 60 years, has been saying, look, Ma, no cavities. And they have been there, and they've been the trusted brand. Pepsodent is just a non, you know, it's been around longer, but who are they? What do they stand for? What are they about? You're willing to pay, what is it, 400% more for Crest just because of the trusted bonding that's going on with that brand. What might this look like in practice? Let's look at Wayfair. Wayfair, you guess what I need. Shop everything home at Wayfair.com. Okay, Wayfair has a huge mass media branding approach that they do on television and on radio. Uh, and it's all about, this is what the site's about, and when you need us, we're here. Once you go to that site, and anybody's ever shopped at Wayfair, or even, even just looked at something on Wayfair, you know what happens next. Your email box gets hit every single day, sometimes multiple times a day, with, look what's on sale right now. Uh, so most of their efforts are going toward uh, a broad branding approach, emotional connection with people, uh, and then uh, a portion of their budget then goes digitally and says, okay, we're on sale and let's talk to you right now if you happen to be that person that's in the market right now. That appears to be the balance. Intentionally choose how and what you're going to measure. You're going to measure short-term efforts, on the short term, you're going to measure long-term efforts on the long term. Don't collude the two because just because you're having success in the short term, that is not an indicator that you're going to have success in the long term. The two just are not connected like that. Why is this so important? It's important because in the last handful of years, more and more effort has been put to the short-termism, uh, short-term tactics and short-term approaches in people's marketing. Uh, it's been increasing at a dramatic rate. The other thing that's been happening, according to the data, is that the over that same period of time, 
The results are going down. Campaign effectiveness has been dropping off in that exact same period of time. People's budgets are getting smaller. People think they're getting things for free, that they can have an Instagram account and they don't have to do the other stuff. But the data clearly shows, oh yeah, you got to do the other stuff. Uh, but more and more businesses are not doing that and they're paying the price for it. Uh, the, the results are going down and down. The effectiveness is dropping off. Um, and there's just more and more confusion now more than ever. This has always existed. You know, do I put a coupon in the paper? Do I put an ad on the radio? Um, now it's, do I, do I put my efforts on Google AdWords or, or do I uh, put something on uh, TV or radio? And the answer is yes, you do, you do both and you do them with, intentional, with an intentional ratio that says we're going to apply this much to sales activation now, and we're going to apply this much to our long term because we want to still be in business five years from now. There's a lot of other great data that's in there and I'll be pouring through that and sharing it as the weeks go on. Um, and they have had some new publications since the long and the short of it came out uh, that gets a little more granular and a little more specific category to category and media to media uh, that I'll be sharing as the weeks go on. I hope this helps. I think it's some pretty interesting information uh, that not only validates, uh, not that we needed to validate what we do, we already know what our successes are, um, but it adds another element in there that says, hey, yes, obviously think long term, but don't forget to add those little spikes of short term success in there. That actually starts to make everything work a little stronger.